Hello everyone, welcome back. I decided to switch up the scenery. I don't have any wine today, but I do have diet soda. It's vanilla Coke Zero. I cannot have any caffeine for some reason. It just like makes me a disaster of a human being. I get shaky and I get like anxious. I don't have anxiety. So diet soda is the only caffeine I can drink. Delicious. I'm just over wine at the moment. It's the middle of the week and I don't feel like drinking. Before I get into my review today, I actually have two books that I want to go over with you guys. But a lot of you always ask me, how do I find all of my books? And I actually found this really cool app that I've been using for almost a year now. And it's called the Goodreads app. And I always talk about this at the end of my videos. You have friends and people can follow you, you can post book reviews. But I find all of my books through this because when you make your profile, you can go in and pick genres that you like and books that you've read, and then you can get suggestions from that. I find my books through people that I follow for reviews. I find it through authors who have read other books. I used to just go into the library or Barnes & Noble and just like wander around and I'd read like the first chapter and see if I was into the book, but this saves a lot of time and I try not to rely like too heavily on the reviews because I know everyone has different tastes at the end of the day, but it's really helpful being able to see different reviews and how everyone likes the book and just the overall rating of the book. Two books that I'm going to be comparing today I found on Goodreads and they're also very similar. They're both domestic suspense novels. Beautiful covers on both of them, by the way. And they both have a pretty similar overall rating. The first one that I'm going to be reviewing is Something in the Water by Katherine Stedman. Fun fact, this author was a character in Downtown Abbey. I've never seen the movie, so I don't know, but I just read that, so I guess that's pretty cool. This is a debut novel. I'm gonna start off with the synopsis for you guys. Erin is a documentary filmmaker on the brink of a professional breakthrough. Mark, a handsome investment banker with big plans. Passionately in love, they embark on a dream honeymoon to the tropical island of Bora Bora, where they enjoy the sun, the sand, and each other. Then, while scuba diving in the crystal blue sea, they find something in the water. Could the life of your dreams be the stuff of nightmares? Suddenly, the newlyweds must make a dangerous choice to speak out or to protect their secret. After all, if no one else knows, who would be her? It is very unique storytelling. It's told in first person point of view and we actually, at the beginning of each chapter, we get the dates, the times. It's like basically a diary entry. The hook of this book is amazing. It goes like this. Have you ever wondered how long it takes to dig a grave? Wonder no longer. It takes an age. However long you think it takes, double that. When you have a good hook, it can really hook you <laughs> Pun intended. It really gets you into the storyline. Erin actually finds a way to tie her work into solving the problems in her marriage. And I know all of these sound like really good things and there were a lot of good reviews on the app, but personally for me, I only gave this a two out of five star rating. I had actually quite a lot of cons. I was struggling to finish this book. I can like appreciate any slow burning novel if the payoff is going to be big in the end and I get a little bit of action like throughout even if it's slow burning but this was like torture for me I just it was like the payoff was not big for the type of suspense that we were supposed to be building towards just ugh, the first half was like especially like dreadful like the second half was definitely much better so I was a little bit more enthralled oh I just like hated Aaron and Mark I mean I can appreciate like bad characters because they can really add to the story and everything, but I just hated both of them. They were so dumb and annoying and I just could not stand them, like, one bit. The thing that really bothered me about them was all of their actions had no rhyme or reason to them. Like, if you're doing something bad and I can understand or, like, empathize with you or I can see where you're coming from, that's different, but their actions, in my opinion, had no reason. It was just like, okay, I'm just doing this horrible thing. Maybe if I liked Erin Moore, our main narrator, than I would have been able to like sympathize with her for all the trouble that she was going through, but I just, I couldn't get there. Like some parts weren't realistic to me. I was just like, is this person really this dumb? I guess people are dumb, but. I also felt like there was a lot of unnecessary detail and unnecessary characters. I was really disappointed overall because I felt like there was such a good plot here and you could have done, the author could have done so much more with the characters. Overall, like the whole plot and theme were 
actually really good and it just could have been a much better story if it were just written differently or just told differently. I still managed to finish even though I did not enjoy the book. I'm not going to say that I won't recommend it because I have seen some very good reviews on that on this book but it just wasn't my cup of tea personally. The next book that I'm going to be reviewing was a 5 out of 5 star read for me. I absolutely devoured it. It's Her Pretty Face by Robin Harding. Can we just talk about how gorgeous this cover is? I, I love it. Let's start off with the synopsis. Frances Metcalf is struggling to stay afloat, a stay-at-home mom whose troubled son, Marcus, is her full-time job. She thought that the day he got accepted into the elite Forrester Academy would be the day she started living her life. Overweight, insecure, and lonely, she's desperate to fit into Forrester's world. But after a disturbing incident at the school leads the other children and their families to ostracize the Metcalfs, she feels more alone than ever before. Until she meets Kate Randolph. Kate is everything Frances is not. Beautiful, wealthy, powerful, and confident. And for some reason, she's in not interested in being friends with any of the other Forrester moms, only Frances. As the two bond over their disdain of the Forrester snobs and the fierce love they have for their sons, a startling secret threatens to tear them apart. Because one of these women is not who she seems, her real name is Amber Kunick, and she's a murderer. I think that was a phenomenal synopsis, and it sums up the book pretty well. This book is told through third-person point of view, and we get three dif different narrators, and they alternate between then and now. And I just, I loved the way this book started off with a newspaper article. And in the article, we see that it is about a missing teenage girl in Arizona from 1996 and for some reason whenever things start off like with a news article or anything like that it just hooks me immediately. This book was beautifully written in my opinion because it was just so easy to read. Intriguing characters. Each and every character even if they were evil some of them you still could get invested in them. It's really, really important that authors can do that. I would classify this as a completely engrossing one sitting read. It wasn't like the kind of like, oh my god, I need to figure out what happens next. It was, it just flowed. It like didn't wow me or blow me away that like by the surprise at the end, there were a few twists and turns throughout, but it wasn't like, I was waiting for that like crazy twist, but it still was like I needed to find out what happened. The two main female characters, Frances and Kate, both have secrets from the past, and like they say in the synopsis, we try to guess throughout the book who is worse, like whose secret is worse, who really is the murderer, like what have they both done in their past that they're hiding from everyone else around them. We see through the eyes of the victim's younger brother, and we kind of second guess ourselves throughout the novel, like how is this connected to Frances and Kate now? And it also touches on the dark side of a sociopath and also lightly touches on the idea of nature versus nurture. This was an amazing domestic drama. I would highly recommend it to anyone who enjoys a little bit of suspense with different narrators alternating between the past and present, but this book I think would be good for almost anyone because you can just really get into it, the characters are all intriguing, and like I said, it's just a completely engrossing one sitting read. Everything ties up at the end very nicely. Five out of five stars I think was well earned for Her Pretty Face by Robin Harding. To bring it all back to the Goodreads app, so Something in the Water was a 3.74 overall out of five stars, and Her Pretty Face is rated 3.86 stars out of five. So not too far apart, but as you can see from my review, I personally thought they were very different books. I did not really enjoy Something in the Water, but I loved Her Pretty Face, so it's always up to everyone's own discretion. I just say it's good to get an idea and try and feel out the books for yourself, though. Take the ratings with a grain of salt. Definitely use them as a guide, but don't rely on them very heavily. That's my personal advice. That concludes our video today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please follow me on the Goodreads app, Ariana Reardon, or request to be my friend. I will happily accept. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Ariana, three underscores R. Link is in the info box below. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.